All right, this is internal loadings developed in structural members. So when you're designing um, a beam, a structure, whatever it is, uh, you need to understand the internal loadings of the beam or structure to ensure that the material can handle the moments and shear forces that you're applying to it. So, say we had a beam and we've got P1 and P2. Got point B and point A. So let's say we wanted to uh, know the internal loadings at point B. So we would section the beam right here, section AA, and then we could draw its free body diagram. So if I draw that first section, at point A we've got a fixed support, so it's going to have a force in the y direction, AY, force in the x direction, AX, and a moment, MA. Then at the area of the cut, we're going to have its internal loads, which is the shear force, VB, the normal force, NB, and the bending moment, MB. Okay, then we can draw the other side of the beam as well. So let's say we got P2, and P1. And then at our point B, we've got our shear force, our normal force, and our bending moment. Such that if you were to put these back together, the shear forces would cancel, the uh, normal forces would, as with the bending moment. So that each segment is um, in equilibrium. All right, so NB is our normal force. And it acts perpendicular to the cross section. VB is our shear force. and it acts tangent to the cross section. And then we have MB, our bending moment. So let's talk about the sign convention for these. So in um, when you're talking about internal loadings, you don't get to choose what's positive and what's negative. There's a sign convention for that. And that becomes important when we start to do shear and moment diagrams, which is coming soon. So we've got our normal force like this. And if you were to cut on this side, be the opposite, such that the segment in the middle would be in tension. So this is considered positive because it creates tension. Now for our shear force, it's down when you cut over here and up over here, such that the middle segment would tend to rotate clockwise. So that's positive because it rotates the beam clockwise. bending moment going counterclockwise and then over here 
it's going clockwise such that the middle segment segment would bend upwards so positive because it will tend to bend the segment upwards. Okay. And you can have these same loadings um, in 3D. So internal loadings in 3D. So say you had a beam sectioned at point C. So we would have VX and MX, and we would have NY and MY. Then we would have the shear force in the Z direction and the moment in the Z direction. So MY is considered the normal force. I'm sorry, NY. is the normal force. Vx and Vz are the shear force. My is the torsional or twisting moment. And MX and MZ are the bending moment. All right, so let's talk about the procedure for finding internal loadings. First we do our support reactions. If necessary, before the member is sectioned, first determine its support reactions. Next is the free body diagram. So, when determining Where to, make um, where to make the section, ensure the exact location of external forces and couple moments are in the correct location. So when determining where to make the section, ensure the exact location of external forces and couple moments are in the correct location. After the section Draw your free body diagram 
of the segment. that has the least number of loads on it. Always draw your internal loadings in the positive sign convention. All right. After your free body diagram comes the equations of equilibrium. So you want to sum the moments at the section which will lead to determining the internal bending moment. And if you um, if your solution is negative, then the sense of the quantity is opposite. That's it.